first up from Robert Olmstead. They're sleeping on Thompson. He played good when Woods was out, plus he's an upgrade over Jeff Heath. Is he an upgrade over Jeff Heath? Because I, I kind of look at them as like, it's six of one, and you got half a dozen of the other. Like, isn't it just the same? Like, you're, you're probably fine. I, I don't feel like you feel, oh, yeah, Darian Thompson, baby. I actually like him coming out of Boise State, third-round pick by, by the Giants. But I, I, I cannot talk myself into, even though he was fine when he was out there last year, going, oh, yeah, baby, Darian Thompson, safety issues fixed. That's just not the way how – that's just not how I'm feeling on that one. Super Chat from Kilgore says, you know I'm trying to go to that Niners-Cowboys game. That could be a good one. I mean, you might have some very real playoff implications once that game gets going. Not even just playoff implications, but potentially seeding implications. Remember this year, that number one seed means more than it ever has with the way that they're doing the seeding and adding that extra playoff team this year. So who else thinks the Cowboys make the playoffs? We've got about 1,000 people watching live right now. I think they make the playoffs. I've consumed the Kool-Aid enough already. If you agree with me, I want all of you to like this video. From Emil, who do you think is the most handsome player? You know, honestly, I think you have to consider the quarterback. Dak's pretty handsome. I, I want you guys to chime in here, too. I, I think Dak's pretty handsome. Uh, I, I'm a, it's not the most handsome look, but I think Amari Cooper's mutton chop thing look, looks cool. It's not really, not, it's not a handsome thing. I know Purdue's Red hasn't seen this, but, like, Cooper's got mutton chops this year. It, 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 it's, it's very unusual here. Uh, I see a Neville Gallimore one in there. Okay. Uh, Joe Looney. Uh, that is internal beauty, my friend, because I love Joe Looney. All right, Joshua Quinn, convert a kicker to punter. I mean, you, you can. He also says he wants to be the punter for, for 50K. Uh, I'll do it for, for 40K next. Uh, look, you can convert a kicker if you want. The, the or, oh, shoot, uh, 400K, 400K, 400K. That was bad. Four, 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 400K. That's a big difference right there. 400K. I might do it for 40K. Um, I mean, but... There is a different motion for kicking and for punting, but some of those guys have done that before, sure. Just bring in somebody. That's all I'm asking for. All right, King J, thoughts on giving Sewell snaps at tackle? You know, I wouldn't have been surprised if Williams had been healthy this offseason if they were going to give him some more cross trainers, which they've done kind of sort of before. The problem is, there's no planet right now in which Williams is better than a healthy Tyron Smith or a healthy Collins. If there's a long-term injury for one of those guys, I would absolutely experiment, specifically left tackle, trying C. Will over there. But he was in a full go in camp. He's going to be your left guard starter. So because you didn't want to overwork him, I think the potential there kind of went by the wayside this camp. From a deal seven, Tom, I don't think we should be starting Darian Thompson over HaHa. -Ha. We know DT is a decent backup. Dix is a proven starter in this league training camp. So Darian Thompson was a training camp winner for me. Ha, -Ha Clinton Dix is a training camp loser. So I get where you're coming from. If we were only basing this on what they've done in the NFL, it's pretty clearly Ha, -Ha Clinton Dix. But if you're a coaching staff and you've got a safety – who's playing better than the guy above him, don't you want to start him? Like, isn't that what we complained about with Jason Garrett, that he had his guys, he played Jason Witten over Blake Jarwin, even though things had changed. So if Thompson is out playing Clinton Dix at camp, don't we want the Cowboys to make that change because we've complained about the lack of adjustments from Garrett? I, I get where you're coming from. I, I completely do. It's a fair comment. I just wonder if maybe it is the best move for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, regardless of who the Cowboys start at safety this year, I feel pretty good about the Cowboys record in 2020. I am going to make this question the pinned comment on today's video. So if you get the ad break here, scroll on down and get your votes in as to what the Cowboys will be this season. We'll give some shout-outs now here. I see 11-5. 16-0 from Jordan. 
He has completely pounded the Kool-Aid already. Drunk on it. Spencer B, 10 and 6. For the most part here, almost all of these. 10 and 6, 11 and 5, 11 and 5, 10 and 6, 16 and 0 from Jordan. My burner account says 9 and 7, 12 and 4, 10 and 6, 11 and 5, 11 and 5, 11 and 5. That seems to be the very popular number here in terms of you know, what the Cowboys could end, end up doing. I am kind of going back and forth between that 11 and 5, that 10 and 6 range. I think that that could make some sense. I think that's, that, that's about the, the correct range for this organization. I think that could be a very good path here for the Dallas Cowboys in terms of, hey, that's going to win you the NFC's possibly, or at least make you the playoffs. All right, from Nathan Yon, uh, trade ha-ha and a second or third for Marlon Humphrey and then sign Earl Thomas or Eric Reed. Um, look. A, a ha-ha in a second does not get you a number one corner. Like, there's there's absolutely no way that the, the, the Ravens would ever accept that trade. Like, they, they're not going to. That's a horrible deal for them. So, sign Earl Thomas or Eric Reed, sure. If you're trading a, a second or third rounder, that's not how it's going to go at all. All right, Luis Hernandez, I heard Alaquan, uh, Pancake Gallimore, is that Praise for Isaac or worry for Gallimore? I mean, I, I don't know what the context of the drill was, right? I I don't know, you know, I think that's, I, I don't think that that it's a, a panic situation for Gallimore. I think it's praise, though, for the young kid out of, out of Mexico, Isaac Alacron, who I think has been able to, to make some, at least sticking around moments on tra uh, at camp where he's going to be a practice squad guy this year. There are going to be times where all players get pancaked. I, I wouldn't freak out one way or the other, and I would choose to view it through a more positive lens. Now, as for Gallimore overall, I think the adjustment process has been a little bit slower. That's why, in case you guys missed it, I did flip Tristan Hill, and I did flip Neville Gallimore around in terms of where uh, where they're at on the depth chart right now. I think both guys will continue to to get a chance, but I did want to make note of that. Now, there are some Cowboys jerseys on sale. They were off sale for a while. Now they're back. Chatsports.com slash Cowboys jersey. They've got a whole bunch of different styles. they got the all whites. they got the more darker navy blues. they got some of the throwback ones in there, too. For all the top players for this Cowboys organization, check the comments. Check the description as well if you can't find it in the comments. I've got that link in there for you, so all you have to do is click and go shop. Omega S, if y'all need a punter, go after the punter the Chiefs released due to money issues. That is Dustin Colquitt. Thank you, uh, executive producer Mitch over there. Sorry, intern Mitch. My bad. Uh, sure, why not? He's old, but he was better than Chris Jones. Could he be on a one-year vet min deal? If he's still the league worst, all I did was save money. So I, I think I've made my point very clear on Chris Jones. The Cowboys so far have clearly disagreed. I would bring in a new punter because why am I investing in a spot that Chiefs that don't need to invest in? Nope. Now, if y'all are true Cowboys fans, because I am a true Cowboys fan here as well, I want you guys to subscribe. About 1,000 people watching live right now. I know a lot of you guys are new, and that's totally cool. Maybe it's your first time watching the show. Maybe you got mad at me for something and then you didn't subscribe. It's all good. We all just want the Cowboys to win. So if you have not already, I want you to click that subscribe button right now. All right, from Shuri, have you ever noticed that the Cowboys have had their best years when they lose their first game in several of the last years? They did that in 2016. Uh, 95, producer Brett's right there too. Uh, it, it's funny how that happens. I don't really think there's, there's any correlation. All right, from the Ponce show, with no true fullback, do you see Blake Bell playing that role more than anyone else? Maybe it's Blake Bell. Maybe it's Dalton Schultz. Uh, maybe you still use Shewa Alana Lua in there. Uh, McCarthy had said he viewed the fullback and tight end spots as more or less interchangeable. In the end, I'm not going to worry too much about the fullback because, yes, I know the Cowboys have used, or McCarthy has used one in the past, but I'm not pulling, in most cases, 
C.D. Lamb or Blake Jarwin or somebody off the field, put Blake Bell out there. You know, I just that's just not something I, I'm going to go. Skimp attack. Uh, from what you've seen in camp so far, is Diggs better than Brown? That's a good question. Um, I think they've both had some ups and downs. I think that Diggs' highs have been a little bit better than Brown's, but I think that Brown, especially early on in camp, which shouldn't be a huge surprise there, has been a little bit more consistent. Um, in terms of like long term, I'm definitely going to take Diggs over Brown. I think my main emphasis here is that, again, based on camp, we can't drink all of the Kool-Aid quite yet, there's a lot to like from what we've seen out of both of those guys, and that is going to be important for the Cowboys who, you know, are trying to replace Byron Jones and need better cornerback play. Trey Brocker, what team scares you the most matchup-wise this season? Mine is Baltimore. I had a pretty good answer, and I don't know if, if this is your mindset, Trey, or if, or if we just happen to agree. I worry about mobile quarterbacks because I have been burned in many years looking at you, Jeff Driscoll, by quarterbacks that can run. Now, new coaching staff should help things, but the read option is not a play the Cowboys have done very or stopped very well, I, I should say. From a real Cowboys fan who had better be subscribed then, if an offensive tackle is out week one, who do you think is the best option? If it is a short-term injury, give me Brandon Knight. I don't think that um, Cam Irving is a very good player. I, I simply do not. So I would prefer to see Brandon Knight out there. From Jordan Jamerson, what if we go get Jair Alexander, the quarterback for the Packers? What if I win the lottery tomorrow? First off, I'm ghost. See you guys. Um, no, I, sure, you, like, you would love to get him. The Packers aren't trading him. He's a number one corner. Those guys aren't available. Sorry. From Psycho Freestyles, Psycho, I'm not sure. Uh, what if we didn't trade for Amari Cooper? What are the chances we would have a different quarterback just out of curiosity? It's, it, it is a non zero chance. Um, I, I think the Cowboys made the Cooper trade because they realized they messed up. They realized, oh, my God, our receivers are bad. I mean, everyone, everyone tries to claim Dak's always had a great receiver core. That's why it's been completely turned over in the four years he's been here, right? Like, that receiving core pre Amari Cooper was one of the worst in the NFL. It was horrible. So, might have been a chance. I think what you would have seen if the Cowboys didn't trade for Cooper, Garrett was getting fired, and who knows who they, who they would have ended up hiring and how it would have impacted Dak Prescott. So I don't know for certain, but it definitely is a non-zero chance. All right, from Spencer B, over under 14.5 touchdowns for Zeke this season. It's a great question. Um, I think I'll take, uh, if, if I can't include receiving, it's an easy under, because he's never hit, he hit, hit more than that one time. If you include rush or receiving, you had a really good over uh, under. I think I'll take the under both. I'll go 14 total rushing and receiving combined, but get your guys' votes in there. You can also, by the way, rank Zeke among NFL backs this year. Is he number one? Is he number two? Number three? I don't think we're going to put him outside the top three, but maybe you guys will surprise me. So get your votes in where Zeke ranks in the NFL among backs. And if you're a big-time Zeke fan, heck, go get his jersey. Chatsports.com slash Cowboys jersey. They don't just have Zeke, by the way. They got a whole bunch of options out there. That link is in the comments, and it is in the description as well. So go check it out. Hey, Cowboys fans. Thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the Internet. That's news rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.